You are now entering the courtroom of Judge Mental. Hey, Judge. Oh, oh, what's up? Yo, I saw this crazy flick over the weekend that you have to see. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah, man, let's do it. It's called Barbarian. It's set in Detroit where this girl, Tess, she comes into town for a job interview, it's dark, it's pouring rain, and she finds her Airbnb occupied by the mother effing Pennywise. What? Is this a Stephen King crossover? Nah, nah, it's just the dude who played Pennywise. But luckily, he cleans up real good, so Tess decided to stay. She did. No way, Judge, that's not it. Pennywise actually seems like a decent guy. A little weird, but decent. She decides that she's going to call a hotel and find another place to crash. So she rings in a single hotel. They don't have any rooms. So she gives up. In Detroit. Now, I've never been to Detroit. But she is sitting there with a computer in her hand. Don't she have Kayak or Idris Elba commercials in this universe? But Benny, there are over 5,700 hotel rooms in Detroit. Thanks, Google. I know, right? But I digress. After rummaging through the man's toiletry bag and she snaps a pic of his driver's license, they chat it up a bit, they share some wine, and then she relegates him to the couch. In the middle of the night, she hears some bumping around in the dark and finds that Pennywise has night terrors. She did. Ain't that about a bitch? Who gives a monster clown nightmares? The next morning, Tess realizes that she is not in the hood, but in Fury Road. She makes her interview, the boss tells her to find somewhere else to stay, and Tessa takes her silly ass right back to the house. She did. But wait, there's more. Back in the house, she can't find toilet paper, but it's in the basement, and she gets locked in. She did. Nah. Well, she finds a rope in the wall and gives it a pull. What? You just in someone else's house pulling on random ropes? She finds a creepy door and then a creepy room. She gets freaked out. And then Pennywise finds in the basement and gets her out of there. Credits? Nope. And Pennywise, feeling spry, decides that he wants to go and inspect the room. And Tessa's dumbass follows him down when he stops responding. Has this girl learned nothing from Scary Movie? I'm gonna miss you, girl! Oh, no. Instead of beating the hell out of there, she finds a tunnel under the house in the hellscape of the neighborhood and follows him down the stairs. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell yes. She finally finds Pennywise. He tells her that they are not alone and then comes face to face with, you guessed it, the Barbarian. A naked seven foot tall monster who turned Pennywise into applesauce and then puts Tess in a cage. Damn, that is a crazy flick. Bruh, that's the first 20 minutes. The fuck? Only I didn't say fudge. Right? Then Justin Long shows up for zero reason. And he's a douche. And the owner of the house. So, speed round. He goes into the house, finds a place not taken care of for weeks, finds the tunnel, and then thinks that he can use the extra space for more money. Guilty. Of what? I don't know. But if he's a D-bag, he's guilty of something. Touche. But let me get back. He shows up. He finds the tunnel, he finds Tess, and then the monster finds him. She tries to give him the bottle, and Tess says she just wants him to nurse. There's more useless backstory to explain the monster, some creep who kidnapped a woman, and then the monster is the progeny of a few generations of inbreeding. Uh, sure. Okay. The monster just wants a baby of her own. And who can resist Justin's boyish good looks? But I digress again. Tess Jackie chans her way out of the trap, and Justin takes his dinner straight from the tap. Tess makes a break for it and narrowly escapes with the help from a dude from the neighborhood who's been watching the monster for years. She tries to get Justin help, but the cops treat her like she's invisible. Justin tries to help himself and find some creepy old man, but doesn't seem all that suspicious that he's living in a room, in the tunnels, with a monster lurking around, and still has a 13-inch television and VHS tapes. He's got a working VCR? You know there's something wrong with him, right? Well, the old man had a gun and ended himself. So Justin makes his escape. And Debbie Dimwit went back into the tunnel to help Justin and he shoots her. They find the neighborhood dude again and he takes them back to the bunker where they'll be safe. Until the monster yeah. breaks up the party and literally beats Bruh to death with his own arm. 
Did Justin light her up? No, this punk ass ran again. Tess is struggling with a bullet in her side, and Justin is basically hoping that the monster will get her slow ass. Then they run up to the top of Water Tower, cause you know, it's always safe up there. So is this the King Kong moment where the monster falls to her death? Kinda. To save himself, Justin decides to chuck Tess off the edge to make the monster chase. But I'm have to say, that monster is some anti-hero, cause somehow she beat Tess to the ground. Spider-Man got some lessons to learn. Did she take Justin with her? Nah, he came down afterwards, realized that Tess survived, and oh, so did the monster. Just long enough to crack his head like a watermelon. Enough! I am ready to rule. Judge, ju this, ain't, this ain't no case. I was just telling you about- Guilty! Justin is the monster, and is sentenced to five years of suckling the monster's memories. Make sure you come back for the next episode of Judgmental.